Welcome back to Hardware Unavailable and another month of looking at how expensive graphics cards still are to buy. Unfortunately, MSRP GPUs seem pretty much off the table this year based on the trends we're seeing, but I think a lot of you guys have already accepted that would be the case many months ago. But you all seem to be enjoying this series, so we're back for another monthly installment. One of the major things that happened this month was the launch of AMD's Radeon RX 6600, a fairly mediocre product that's both bad value and good value at the same time. Bad value from the sense that it performs quite closely to the last generation RX 5600 XT despite costing 20% more, but good value from the sense that in the current market, actual retail prices make it one of the better GPUs going around based on cost per frame. In a surprise to exactly zero people, AMD's advertised MSRP of $330 US dollars has turned out to not be true for the vast majority of buyers. It appears the card was available for $330 US or a locally equivalent price for a very limited run of cards available at launch, but since then prices have increased across the board. This is in keeping with the exact same pricing strategy we saw at the 6600 XT's launch, where the MSRP was effectively a joke and not at all representative of the card's price in the days and weeks afterwards. These sorts of highly misleading MSRPs are just par for the course these days, not that I think that they are acceptable. What we've heard from retailers surrounding the 6600's launch is that the card was available in good quantities, but the majority of this stock was being sold via distributors and AIBs at a price much higher than the listed MSRP. One retailer we spoke to suggested that the 6600 was being bought up by miners at the lowest available prices based on the buying patterns and distributor availability they were seeing, leaving the more expensive offerings on shelves for the gaming crowd, or just no one because they weren't exactly moving in large volumes. In markets outside the United States, the card is typically available to purchase right now at prices well above MSRP. Here in Australia, the cheapest cards at PC Case Gear start at 700 Australian dollars, while over in Europe at a site like Mind Factory, you're facing prices starting at around 509 euros. In both cases, this is roughly a 50% price hike over MSRP, and the card is clearly gathering little interest at that sort of inflation as they're still available more than a week after launch. This is despite the newest competing card, the RTX 3060 from Nvidia, being priced significantly higher. In Australia, you're looking at a 71% increase in price, going from a 6600 to a 3060 for only an 11% performance improvement in our 1440p testing. The price hike is a little less insane over in Germany, where RTX 3060s are going for around 28% more than 6600s, but it's still relatively favourable for AMD at retail right now. However, clearly not favourable enough as plenty of AMD GPUs are sitting unsold. And this is continuing the basic trend we've seen for months now at retail. Outside of the United States, most regions have plentiful stock of current generation GPUs. It's just that pricing remains high. Our understanding is that this is entirely due to distributors and AIBs who are hoping to use high prices to cash in while mining is still profitable, even though GPUs are not really selling that well at retail at these sorts of prices. In fact, there's been a slight upward trend in pricing over the past few months at retail to further put the screws in. As this has been the case for a few months now, eventually there will be a build-up of supply at retail and this will cause prices to move downward, but this is proving to be quite a slow process. The thinking here is that while GPUs are still flying off shelves in places such as the United States, the middlemen in the graphics card market are unwilling to lower prices in other regions where sales are much slower. There is little incentive to allocate a large portion of GPUs to Europe or Australia when they can still sell loads of cards at high prices in North America or other regions. I've seen a few cards start to pile up at Newegg in the way they are here in Australia, the RX 6900 XT being one, but we're still some time off demand being saturated in the United States. The other issue we are continuing to be told about is the practice of bundling. We've talked about this in many previous episodes in this series, but basically if you're unfamiliar, distributors are requiring retailers to purchase massive amounts of unwanted stock to gain access to current generation GPUs. This might involve buying, say, 50 motherboards for every 10 graphics cards. We've recently been told that bundling has intensified in the past month or two, with AIBs placing a lot of pressure to move products this way, which has caused the upward tick in pricing that we've seen at retail despite cards really not selling that well. Through bundling, retailers are forced to increase GPU prices to compensate for the losses made purchasing stock for products that no one wants. 
Based on what we've seen over the last few months and what we've heard from those in the industry, it seems unlikely the situation at retail will change much throughout the rest of 2021. GPU makers and various middlemen are very keen on cashing in throughout the upcoming holiday period and seem to be hoping desperate shoppers will give in to their inflated pricing. The fewer people that do that, the more likely GPU prices will come down. What doesn't appear to be much of a factor right now are supply constraints causing a high cost of manufacturing and distribution. While it's still true that we're in a supply constrained market, the actual cost to make these GPUs is well below current retail pricing, and elements such as increased shipping costs and high component pricing for things like memory and PCBs, they're not really to blame here. I don't think it's possible for some of these GPUs to be manufactured at the MSRP that was set up to a year or more ago, however, it also isn't costing OEMs double the MSRP to make these cards, so there is little doubt AIBs are making absolute bank right now. Cryptocurrency mining is still the number one factor that is causing high demand and high GPU prices. We've been saying for some time now that while GPUs are highly profitable for mining, they're basically acting like money printers, causing effectively unlimited demand. Increased supply cannot satisfy unlimited demand, and this will continue to be the case until mining is less profitable. However, the ways in which mining affects GPU pricing are complex. Mining difficulty, cryptocurrency value, and future projections all need to be factored in. If mining is more difficult, the rewards for doing so are less and mining profitability goes down. If cryptocurrency increases in value, then mining is more profitable. But if even on a short-term basis these elements are looking okay for mining, future predictions may cause people to hold off investing in more mining GPUs. In the past month, the price of the most popular coin for mining, Ethereum, has risen by about 35% after being relatively flat in the previous month. During the same period, difficulty has risen by about 7%. This has led to an increase in profitability of between 25 and 30% on a very rough basis, depending on the exact GPU you have at your disposal. Surely that spells bad news for the pricing of GPUs on the scalper market, right? Surely people will want to jump on board the mining train. Well, that's actually not the case. Here we have scalper prices from eBay completed listings, as we've been showing for many months now. Despite significant rises in crypto prices and profitability throughout the month, GPU prices have remained somewhat flat or in most cases saw small declines. All of NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs dropped in price month on month. The RTX 3070 and RTX 3080 in particular both saw drops of 5% or more, while other GPUs were relatively flat. If we look at pricing history, this means that current prices are among the best we've seen since we've been tracking price changes at the start of the year. Despite Ethereum being roughly as valuable now as it was in May, GPU prices are much lower than in May due to lower profitability, and overall pricing is similar to July, which was the best month so far, but of course a little bit higher. Not the massive downward trend some would like to see, but I guess you have to take small wins these days. On the AMD side, GPU pricing is also down, following a very similar pattern to NVIDIA. Of course, prices haven't dropped drastically, and most cards only fell in price by a couple of percent, but considering all the factors at play right now, flat GPU pricing is about as good as you could hope for. It also bucks a recent trend of AMD GPUs increasing in price. This is the first time since July that we've seen prices fall for most of AMD's GPUs, and in general, the level of price inflation is lower for AMD products than NVIDIA. So why haven't GPU prices risen given the increase in mining profitability? Well, for whatever reason, miners aren't adding as many new GPUs into the mining pool now as they were previously. If we look at the hash rate for the Ethereum network, in September there was an increase of about 80 terahashes per second, a 13% increase. But for this past month, just 40 terahashes per second were added, or a 6% increase. That's one of the lowest increases in many, many months, and suggests that interest in adding more GPUs for mining has recently cooled to some degree. I don't have much insight into why this has happened. Perhaps there is increased uncertainty about investing into mining right now. There's been crackdowns on crypto mining in some areas such as China. I'm only a casual observer, so it is hard to say, and on top of this, it could just be a short-term trend rather than something more significant. But at least for this month, it appears to be one explanation for why GPU prices haven't risen even though profitability is up. In previous months, GPU pricing was much more closely linked to profitability rises and falls, so that's definitely something to watch in the future. As for the used GPU market, pricing here is pretty uneventful. Across NVIDIA's previous generation GPUs in the RTX 20 series, GTX 16 series, and GTX 10 series, 
almost all prices were flat month on month. There really isn't that much exciting stuff to talk about here. Prices didn't really change, which makes sense as prices for new GPUs didn't change much either. Then for AMD GPUs, the RX 5000 series continues to be extremely expensive due to their high performance for GPU mining, and anyone that owns one of those GPUs primarily for gaming should look at offloading it in favor of an upgrade. However, I did see prices for AMD's older GPUs decline month on month, though this could be in response to a larger than expected increase last month. Most GPUs here are also not worth considering. Wrapping this video up, I was a little surprised to see GPU prices remain flat month on month given increases to crypto mining profitability. We'd seen in prior months a pretty close relationship between profitability and GPU prices on the scalper market, but in October there seemed to be increased hesitancy around buying up more GPUs for mining, leading to a lower than usual increase in the Ethereum network's total hash rate. This in turn likely prevented a spike in GPU pricing, which is better than expected news for those waiting for decent graphics card prices. Our recommendation continues to be that you should avoid buying a graphics card for gaming at current prices, especially as used GPUs from 4-5 to five years ago are still selling at their launch MSRP. There is no GPU that is easy to recommend, and you should only consider buying something if you are desperate for a GPU, for example, if you're building your first PC, or if your current GPU is inadequate for playing today's games. We've recently shown that gaming on high or even medium settings can still look great, and that's something that you should definitely consider before paying exorbitant prices. Is what you have right now still good enough? And I'd guess for a lot of people that it might well be. If you did want to purchase a GPU right now, the Radeon RX 6600 XT offers the best cost per frame going on current scalper prices, although other GPUs including the 6700 XT, RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 3060 are also worth considering. At times, you can get slightly better prices for LHR versions of NVIDIA's cards, so that's the path that I would probably recommend for most gamers. High-end GPUs, especially the RTX 3090, are stupidly expensive, and you probably shouldn't consider those. The big question continues to be, well, when are GPUs going to become more affordable? Now, that's still too hard to answer, unfortunately, and I wouldn't expect much of a downward trend through to the end of 2020. However, I'm not as doom and gloom about everything as some people are. I've been researching this market for pretty much the entire year now, and personally, I don't think current prices are sustainable. Short term, it's been all happy times for GPU makers, but longer term, yeah, I don't think it's going to work, especially when consoles are priced where they are priced. But elaborating on that is probably an entire video in itself, so I'll leave that discussion for another day, but hopefully in 2022, when we see a few more launches, a few more things falling into place, and another generation of GPUs at the end of the year, that we will see at least some movement on the cost per frame and value front. Anyway, that's it for this month's GPU pricing update video. We will be back next month to take a look, and it will be pretty interesting to see how that one goes. We do have the holiday period coming up, so I'm expecting a bit of a, an uptick in demand. Maybe some gamers will uh, not be able to resist the higher pricing anymore and will jump in into the market. But again, I sort of don't recommend people do that, but we'll see what happens next month as people start to buy a few more things for the Christmas period. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel directly, we do have our Patreon floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. And I'll catch you in the next one.